Hey guys, welcome back to Buff Nations Daily. I am your host, Max. Thank you for watching another video. So we got a little bit of news here out of Colorado. As you know, they had their first scrimmage outside and um, I'm getting word here that Travis Hunter received his number as well as Ivy League transfer Shane Cox. Now, Shane Cox, as you know, he's a transfer out of the Ivy League Dartmouth. And I'm going to go over his um, resume in a second. But um, just to note, he chose the number 99. OK, he chose the number 99 and Jalen Sammy had number 99. OK, he had number 99. He was on that team last year that won one game. He's been on the team and um, he's a senior and he's not going to be able to wear number 99. And I'm going to explain to him how he can use that as motivation now. Oh, yeah, he can use that as motivation. But as far as um, Travis Hunter, I'm not surprised that Travis Hunter received his number. Coach Prime, he says good things about uh, Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter transferred from Jackson State and followed Coach Prime over to Colorado, as you know. So I'm not surprised by this. Now, a little bit about Travis Hunter. Before he went to Jackson State, he committed to Florida State. And in fact, he could have played at a lot of power five schools, Alabama. A lot of people were uh, recruiting him. He was the top high school um, prospect out of um, high school at his senior year. He could have went anywhere. He, he committed. In fact, he committed to Florida State, like I said. But then later on, he chose to go play with his idol coach prime. He felt like he can learn how to play the position of CB from coach prime. But now he's in the slot, but he's going to be playing both sides of the ball. So Coach Prime has nothing but praise for on Travis Hunter. So it's no surprise that he got his number. We know that J5 um, was the first player under Coach Prime tutelage under, you know, as Coach Prime era at Colorado to receive his number. That's no surprise either. Uh, Coach Prime has nothing but praise for him as well. But I want to talk about... Um, Shane Cox. Now, Shane Cox, like I said, he is a he entered Colorado as a graduate transfer with two years eligibility to play while he was at Dartmouth. I'm just going to run this down because he has a lot of experience. He played 22 games, starting 20, totaling 87 tackles, 14 for a loss, eight and a half sacks, one pass deflection, one forced fumble and one fumble recovery. He played in and started 10 games in 2022, registering 53 tackles, eight and a half for a loss and four and a half sacks, a pass deflection and a forced fumble. He was named to Ivy League second team by the coaches and Phil Steele. He played in and started 10 games in 2021, registering 32 tackles, five and a half for a loss, four sacks and a fumble recovery. In 2021, he was named all Ivy League second team by the coaches and named to the fourth team by Phil Steele. He was also an academic all district one selection. He was also the recipient of the team's Charles Stubble 42 Pearson Award for his character, leadership on campus, high academic standing and performance on the field. Now, he was named Defensive Scout Team Player of the Year in 2019. So Shane Cox has a hell of a resume. So he already has the experience um, that Coach Prime is looking for. And Coach Prime has a lot of praise for him. In fact, in um, Coach Prime press conference, he, he said that, look, this guy is tried and tested and um, he don't have any problems with him. But Coach Prime said, the team that you see now is not going to be the team that's going to be playing in September against TCU. And, you know, TCU played for the national title. So this is going to be a very important game, a cornerstone game, in my opinion, for Coach Prime era. So he really wants to win that game. But in order for him to do that, the coaches can't go out there and play. You know, he has to have the personnel that he is comfortable with going out on that field and competing. And he might not feel that he has it right now. Um, all the way 100%. Now, I want to say something really quickly. Okay, Shane Cox took number 99. Jalen Sammy had 99 the previous years. He needs to use this as motivation. And I think one of the strategy that Coach Prime used, because he, he took the numbers away. He said, look, nobody has a number right now. Okay, you have to earn it. Not only do you have to earn your spot on this team, you got to earn that number. When you earn that number, you know you got a spot on the team, right? But you still don't want to get comfortable. 
I think he used that as a strategy to get these players motivated, to let them know what type of intensity that he wants. He wants the intensity and he wants the consistency on every play. Okay, with that being said, for the players that had a number last year, if you played on Colorado last year and you're not getting your number, you need to use it as motivation. You have to be the minister of hustle. You have to be the minister of pain. You got to bring chaos on that practice field. You hear what I'm saying, Jalen Sammy? Uh, let, me, let me just, I'm coming from my perspective. I love it. Let's say if my number got taken away. Oh yeah, I'm going to take it out on that player in front of me. Okay, that player in front of me is going to get 60 minutes of hell. You have to bring your inner Ray Nitschke. Okay, you have to dig down and find your inner Ray Lewis. You have to find your inner Jack Tatum. You have to find your inner Ronnie Lott. Your inner Steve Atwater. Your inner Troy Palomalu. Why am I naming these players? Because these players were no joke on that field. They did not take a playoff, okay? Ronnie Lott didn't take a playoff. Ray Lewis didn't take a playoff. You need that intensity. You need to do when, when coach said you need to dig down deep, you, this is the time to do it. And what better motivation than watching another player have your number now? Let me tell you this. If that happened to me, I said, okay, Coach Prime, I'm getting ready to take it out on your offensive line. Let's say if I'm a defensive end. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm on the second team. Okay, that's fine. Well, I'm going to take it out on your players. I am going to be the minister of pain. I'm going to be the minister of chaos. I am going to get to your quarterback in practice. I am going to make you guys know who I am. I'm going to make you guys realize that I want to be on this team. Okay. Now, thank you for taking my number away. Now, I don't got my inner Ray, Ray Nitschke in me now. Okay. My inner Dick Buck is. Okay. Now, I'm nasty. OK, you want intensity, you want consistency, you want hustle, you want speed, you, you want everything. I got it. OK, see, this is the kind of motivation that you might not see sometime through adversity. You might you, you know, you don't know what you got until you face some type of adversity. That's why Coach Prime is doing this, because you don't know who you are until you face some type of adversity. Like, damn, like my scholarship is on the line. Now I'm bringing it. I'll tell you one player that I, I think that should get a number is Charlie Offendahl, okay, the walk-on. Remember Coach Prime said, you're not going to be a walk-on for long? I don't think so. Even in that practice they had, he's out there overrunning people, okay, getting big yards, getting his Dave Meggett on. See, you, you guys might not be old enough to remember some of you Dave Meggett, okay? Let me tell you a little bit about Dave Meggett. <clears throat> Dave Meggett... OK, play for the Giants under Bill Parcells. Now, how he got his start, because, you know, they had a strike. The NFL had a strike. De Coach Prime, no, they had a strike and um, they had um, they had substitute players come in um, to play that season, half to half the season. And Dave Maggot was on on that team and he played so well. He was the minister of hustle, the minister of everything that he when um the the uh, what do you call it? the substitute players um left he stayed okay he stayed and this is what you gotta have you gotta have that into when when coach Pry I couldn't believe he said this he said some players and were sitting down during the um practice I couldn't believe he was saying that I couldn't believe he was saying when you get in the field some people are trotting or walking on the field no you're supposed to hustle on the field and when you have to get off the field you hustle back to the sidelines. This is old school. See, the, you, see what these players don't understand. You got old school coaches there. OK, old. you have an old school head coach that played under Bobby Bowden. You see what I'm saying to you? You got an old school coach there. So that means you got to be nasty. You got to bring it. OK, if you a defensive end, that offensive tackle that's in front of you. Oh, you got to be the minister of pain. Yes, indeed. You got to be it almost got to be a fight on the field. Listen, I'm keeping my I'm keep, not only am I keeping my position, I'm you're going to give me my number. Oh, yeah, you're going to give me my number. You see, you see this intensity that I have right now. That's what you need. You you got to have a dog in you. Now, I'm not saying li you're literal. You have to be a literal dog. Now, I'm not saying that you have to you have to this, see this something that you can't teach. That's what Coach Prime said. You either got it or you don't. You could teach technique. OK, 
You can't, you can't, you can, it's some things you can't teach. You can teach technique. You can teach certain plays in the playbook, but you cannot teach the dog. You cannot teach that grit, that true grit that you got to have. You can't teach it. You got to have it already. And, it, and if you don't have it, he got to go. He have to replace you. This is what he's looking for. They, they're playing a fast tempo game. I saw how they played at Jackson State. They played a fast tempo game and they had players on there that wanted. OK, Tyler um, on the offensive line that transferred from Jackson State. He's going to be there. He, he's going to be there because he wants it. OK, now Kent State transfer Jack Bailey. He he's coming from Kent State. He's another experienced player that's coming in. He's going to be there against TCU. Just know it. He's going to be probably starting because his coaches that trans that that's now at um, Colorado that can't that transfer from Kent State. They know that he's tried and tested. He's battle tested. So, he, you know, you know, some players you already know. I think we all know some players that's going to start. But if you one of those players on the fence, you need to find your inner Ray Nitschke, your inner hustle. OK, your inner Dick Buckus. Your inner Ronnie Lott, your inner Mike Singletary. Remember when Mike Singletary played for the, the 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 Bears? How he used to look with that intensity. You remember that? You remember how Ray Lewis had that same intensity when he was a linebacker? That same that crazy intensity. That's what you got to have now. I'm telling you, players, if you listening to this, it, oh, it's easy to make that team when you're playing for an old school coach. You just got to hustle, but also you got to get into that playbook too. And then also he wants you to do good in school and be a uh, outstanding character. You got to have it all. But when you on that field, oh, yeah, you have to be a beast. You have to be the bully of the woolies. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, like I said, there's some players, you know, on the team like um, that came in Travis Hunter and, and Shador and Shiloh. You know, they're going to have their numbers. OK, Simon Craig, you know, they're going to have their numbers. OK. But you, if you're on the fence, if you know you played at Colorado, you only and look, here's another thing Coach Prime said. He said, um, he said uh in a meeting, he said what did he say? He said that you guys only won one game last year. He said they got rid of the coaches. Who you think they're gonna get rid of next? Well, he was talking about the players that was on that team. He said, You're on the chopping block. That gotta be motivation for you guys. That has to be it ain't no smiling in practice. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see no smiling in practice. OK, I want you to be bringing intensity. I want you to be taking out on that man that's in front of you. You, you hear me? Because the coaches, if you bring in that kind of intensity, you 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 acting like you're in a Ray Lewis out there. They're not getting rid of you. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to tell you they're not going to get rid of you. So that's what I wanted to say there. And Charlie Offendahl, I think he should get a number because he's out there giving it his all. He's out there hustling. He's out. He's doing everything they're asking him to do. Everything. And if he don't get his number, he's not on that team when they play TCU. Then I then I'll be looking at the team with a side eye. I said, wait a minute, y'all. Y'all got to re, you got to reward hard work, but not you. You know how the coach said, how many of you guys giving it 100 percent? It's the offensive line coach that said it. He said, how many of you give? He said, you got to give it more than 100 percent. You got to give it Ray Lewis percent. You got to give it Troy Malu, Troy Palomalu um, percent. You have to dig down deep and go crazy on that field. You understand? Even if you blow a play, if you go out there going crazy, they, they'll forget about it. You understand me? Because let me tell you something. You got to have that mindset. I don't give a damn if TCU played for the national title. I don't care. I'm going to go out there and knock somebody on their cleats. You understand me? That's what you got to have. And uh, drop your comment below. Let me know how you feel. I know it's kind of this is a touchy subject, especially if you are a parent and you have um, a child that's on the team. You know, you you know, it's uncertain. Like, OK, damn, you know, he said he's going out there to try to replace people. Is my son going to have a scholarship or not? You know, you tell you if I, I'm like uh, mom, dad, uh, -uh I'm going to be there. Because I'm getting ready to take it out on that man in front of me. That's just what's going to happen. You know, and um, you got to be in supreme conditioning. Even after the practice, you need to be on that, that bike. 
You need to be on that treadmill or whatever you got to do to get in supreme conditioning, running sprints on the field, whatever you got to do. Because trust me, somebody's going to see it and they're going to see that you want it that bad. They're going to see that you showing up at 6 a.m. to practice. They're going to show that you staying late watching film. They're going to they're going to see that you're you're asking your position coach. Hey, coach. Hey, what about this play? What about this play right here? What can I do better? They're going to keep you on that team. Understand that. But if you're not giving it 100 percent, you got to give over 100 percent at this point. OK, because Coach Prime is not he's not trying to lose. He's just not trying to do it. He's not trying to do it. And a lot of people say, oh, I give him four games. I give him this. Uh -uh. I'm trying to tell you when he was at Jackson State. See, you guys might have not followed him when he was at Jackson State, all you Colorado fans. You need to go back and go to history. He went and found the personnel and got rid of a lot of players. He got rid of a lot of players. It's the same thing. It's no different than USC. USC did the same thing. You know, when the coach came in from um, Oklahoma, he brought his quarterback with him. He got rid of a lot of personnel and made sure it was the team that he wanted. It's, it's no different. But, you know, it's a thing where my brother was saying, well, how many games you think Coach Prime is going to win? I said, man, he's trying to win now. He said, yeah, but it takes one a couple years to build a team. He said, he's building it now. He's building it now for September. <laughs> he's literally treating this team like an NFL team. And... You know why? Because that's how Alabama wins. Nick Saban treats his team like an NFL team. In fact, they sometimes they think that Alabama can compete with some NFL teams. That's the, he's trying to have that type of men, winning mentality, like Alabama. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like them SEC teams, and no, no, take them nothing away from the Pac-12. But th th this is the mindset he's coming into. Remember, this is not a regular guy, man. This guy has a gold jacket. This guy. When you think of two sport athletes, you think about him, greatest two sport athletes, you think about him and Bo Jackson. These players went to another level and that's what he's looking for. So that's all I got to say. Drop a comment below. Please give me a like, um, comment, subscribe. That'll be greatly help, helpful for the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.